A game story that works well is written by the game designer and the player. And this is a difficult concept to get used to, since often we associate stories with non-interactive media, like movies and books. Also, we often write alone. The player isn't around to mess with the flow of our story. It would be really helpful if we could write a story with the player helping out, playing their part and reminding us of their unique goals and motivations. This is why I strongly encourage you all to try out role-playing games like Dungeons & Dragons as you work on your stories. For those of you that are unfamiliar with the way a game like Dungeons & Dragons works, there are two types of players in a typical game. There's the Dungeon Master. They make all the decisions about what's going on in the world, what all the creatures are up to, and they're similar to a game designer, only they work in real time. The other type of player is the player character. They decide the actions of one of the main characters in the game. You can think of them as similar to a player in a video game. The Dungeon Master describes the setting and the player characters react to the world. The reason I'm bringing this up is that it's an interesting way to try out your game and a good way to see how a player might react to different situations in your game. I'm going to try this out with my friend over here, and I'll be the Dungeon Master. Are you ready to play the game? Sure, why not? Great. I, I think I've got a pretty good game figured out. It's about a mystical adventure into the caverns of Death Mountain to retrieve the magic fire crystals. So I'll describe the initial setting. You're standing outside the giant capital city of your land. On the horizon, you see an imposing silhouette of Death Mountain. Land of adventure. What do you want to do? That capital city sounds interesting. I'm going to go there and buy a magic sword. I sure could use a magic sword. But I have a whole adventure planned in Death Mountain. And I have a shopping trip planned. And I want a magic sword. So clearly, I have not planned this adventure in a way that brings my story along in the way I intended. And trying out my story with my friend here has helped me find problems in it. So let's try that again. But this time, I'm going to try to help guide my player along my intended storyline with a little different approach. Are you ready? Uh -huh. So you're standing outside of the giant capital city of your land, and it's night and all the shops are closed, every one of them. On the horizon, you see the imposing silhouette of Death Mountain, land of adventure. What do you want to do? All the stores are closed, even the ones with the magic swords? Yep, they're all closed. The lights are off, all of them. Death Mountain stands on the horizon, a stark beacon of danger and adventure. Cool, I'm gonna break into all the stores and steal all their magic swords. But what about the magic fire crystals? I don't even know what those things do. I'm going for the magic swords. So clearly that didn't work. But let's say I have a whole free weekend, and I try out many variations of my game with a few helpful players. I might end up with... I am ready for adventure! So you find yourself on the beach. You're on an island where your ship was wrecked in last night's storm. In the distance, behind swaying tropical jungle trees, you see the silhouette of Death Mountain, full of monsters and, some say, the magic fire crystals. Well, I want to fix my ship. All that remains of your ship is the poop deck. Did I mention that the magic fire crystals are said to be more powerful than the most powerful of all magic swords? OK, I'm still going to eat all the coconuts on this island. You gain 42 health points. Nice. Now it's time to check out that mountain. You are immediately attacked by three trolls. And scene. Thanks. Uh-huh. This is not to say that all players are a pain in the butt. And they aren't all trying to go against the story of your game. However, in general, gamers are looking for a challenge. If I was to say that a certain jump was unjumpable, all the players would try to jump it. If I was to say that a certain monster was undefeatable, all the players would try to defeat it. So the same thing happens when I try to tell an audience, I know there's a city here, but it's not part of the story. Continue with my story direction. Doing that sort of thing is not allowing my players to collaborate with my story. 
it's shutting them out. The more your story can include the decisions of your players, the more your players will feel involved with your game. For this reason, it's always a good idea to test your stories and your ideas with your test players. You don't need to wait until you have a working game prototype. You can invite testers at any point to see your ideas and to try out your story. The earlier you can involve your players in your story planning, the better. It will give you a game where your story feels more integrated with your game, rather than tacked on at the end. It's very helpful to start with your story as early as you can. Also, sometimes a clever player might have a really interesting or unique approach to your adventure. You'll never know unless you try.